All right, so it's finally time to do the unboxing and analysis of what is potentially one of the most sought after bait finesse reels currently. And that's gonna be the Hybo Arise Elite. And just like its stable mate, the Hybo Arise Air, it comes in this stunning packaging. And let's go ahead and get to this. I've been waiting to do this video for quite a few weeks now. Made in China, of course. And boom, look at that. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the air also came in a bag just like this. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Hybo, they are a company that is like Doyo in Korea and Banax in Korea. They make fishing reels for other companies to slap their name and badging on and sell in other markets. So they've been around for a while. And this reel here is supposed to be the pinnacle of what Hybo can do currently. All right. Boom, look at that. I can immediately feel the coldness of the metal frame. Okay, that is smooth. Let you guys take a look at this reel. Now I bought this reel because you guys gave me 500 likes on a video of its uh, lower price stable mate, the Arise Air. And yeah. I heard some kind of knocking. Maybe that was something else. But man, look at this reel. It is stunning. Very, very smooth as well. Wow. It's smooth even when I tighten up the drag. Usually when you tighten the drag up on a reel, the smoothness kind of goes away, but with this Elite, it feels the same. But yeah, I'm gonna do my customary inspection, check out all the details and features, write them all down, and show them to you guys. Okay, so I'm done with my inspection and after looking at this reel over for quite a few minutes and mounting it on a rod, palming it, I can confidently say that this reel is definitely a flagship. It's built extremely well, feels like a mainstream reel to me, and it's quite a big improvement over some previous Hobo reels that I've had in the past. And style and design wise, there's a lot going on. And let me show you some of the, I guess, design features. Now you can see it's a very, I guess, generically handsome shape that has just the right amount of aggressive angles. And it's all topped off with this aggressive porting on the top piece here of the frame. Now the great part about this reel is Habo decided to keep the frame symmetrical and the significance of that is that a lot of you guys may remember this reel, the Hybo Arise Air. You can see that it's got a very distinctive, unforgettable, asymmetrical frame shape. That either you love it or hate it. I've kind of grown to love the looks of the Arise Air, but I'm glad that they went with this shape for the Elite, which is the more expensive reel. Now the symmetrical frame with its aggressive cutouts are not the only cool styling features on this reel. The side plates are equally as aggressively styled. As you can see with the handle side plate and then over on the palm side plate. You can see there's a design language of having, I guess this, I don't know what you would call it, this crease running from 
back to front and it even doesn't cover I guess the brake dial on the palm side plate which I think is cool and you can actually see that crease on the handle side plate as well so I like that I don't like when a reel just has a monolithic side plate that is pretty much featureless so yeah everything from the frame and the side plates on this reel looks good to me and let's go over some of the cool trim pieces that this reel has first of all it's going to be featuring these really thin finesse acrylic knobs that are kind of like a see-through smoke it's got the chrome end caps I don't know why they went with I guess this smoke color instead of red to match the spool but I like it it's got the aggressive six arm drag star of course it clicks it's got carbon fiber handle it's got a spool tension that's pretty detailed as you can see it's black with silver trim it's got some machining for grip now it's on the small side in my opinion but maybe you guys can see there should be a there it is there should be a hole drilled in right there that's not a, a machining error that's actually there to I guess show you where you are as far as your spool tension adjustment but as you can see it doesn't click that's kind of disappointing and it is very small I wish they would have made it bigger and of course made it click but that's no big deal because turning the knob it's very smooth and it does take a little bit of effort to turn so it's gonna be hard to accidentally hit it and move it you can see that the thumb bar is very spacious and it's on the high side which I love and it's chrome which I also love and you can see they have some texture here for grip now there's a lot of badging a rise up here elite made in China of course and of course the brake dial is silver then you have this silver arise badge in the front proudly displayed so this reel has in my opinion just the right amount of silver to offset this dark gray color then of course you got that splash of red in the spool oh yeah it says hi bo 80 elite HG and let's check out this uh, trim on the gearbox hopefully you guys can see it but it's machined aluminum black and then they've put in some silver and then you can see in the center they have like this carbon fiber insert or inlay it's cool detail that you really have to inspect the reel in order to see it so it's very subtle very high-end and yeah I like it now this Arise Elite is one of the few bait finesse reels coming out of China that has a metal frame now more and more metal frame BFS reels are popping up but right now carbon or graphite frame reels are still dominating on AliExpress now with the Elite I'm not sure what kind of metal it is I'm assuming it's going to be aluminum because they didn't specify whether it was magnesium or not but the side plates are carbon the reel has 11 plus 1 ball bearings and it's got a lot of other I guess gearing technology that they list as features of this reel which I'll try to put up on the screen for you guys but the Elite comes in only one gear ratio and that's going to be a 7.1 to 1 so not too fast not too slow and there might be a reason for that which I'll go over here in a moment but the reel also has a tapered egg shaped level wind as you guys can see there where the opening is wider than the exit and a lot of you guys will be happy to know that
the Arise Elite does have a clicking drag. Now it's not as refined as the one on the Flight Feather Cormorant as it's a little loud sounding but it has a clicking drag nonetheless. But overall this reel is solid. Definitely feels like a mainstream offering. There are no noises, no creaks, no clacks, no mush anywhere. The thumb bar is solid. Very solid feeling when you are turning the drag star. And going from minimum drag to maximum drag, it only takes a couple of turns with this drag star. There's no play in the knobs. The reel is smooth and quiet. The brake dial adjustment, very solid feeling. Of course it clicks. But yeah, I guess we should have expected this for this being a flagship reel. But I know a lot of people are wary of the reels coming out of China. But I will say this, if you get one of these reels, you will not be disappointed in the build quality. Now, if you take a look at this reel, you'll see it's mimicking the color of this reel. Daiwa's Alpha's Air. Not quite the same shade of gray, but it's a gray reel with a red spool. And with that being said, this is the perfect time to get into size comparisons. Now, when it comes to size, I would consider the Arise Elite to be a small to medium size reel. But the good news is that it is lightweight and really, really comfortable to palm. And with that being said, let's compare the Elite to some other bait finesse reels that are for sale right now. Now, the first one we're going to compare it against is going to be the Daiwa Gekabijin Air. And you can see that the Elite is noticeably bigger than the Gekka Bidgeon. And I don't know. Yeah, it is taller as well. But this is how the Elite would compare size wise to all the other reels that use this frame. So that means the Alpha's Air, the Silver Creek, any of the uh, Tatula 80s and 70s, the Alpha's SV. But yeah. This frame is still one of the smallest available on the market today. So next up is going to be a comparison against its own stable mate, the Arise Air. And you can see the Arise Air is definitely looks to be shorter and a little bit wider, but that could be just a trick. That's because of that top plate of the Arise Air it is definitely asymmetrical. But I think the Elite may be a little bit longer, but the air is definitely lower. Definitely lower on the reel seat. But both Habo reels are very comfortable to palm. Now next up, we're going to compare to another highly refined, high-end Chinese market bait finesse reel. And that's going to be the Flight Feather. And it looks like... I don't know, they're very similar in size. Maybe the Flight Feather looks bigger because of the bright blue paint job. Now, I would compare it against the Cormorant, but that reel is mounted on a rod, spooled up with line, ready to do a cast battle. Now there's a comparison height-wise. Looks like the Flight Feather might be a little bit lower. But yeah, that's the comparison against the Flight Feather, and that of course is going to be the same comparison against the Cormorant. So the next reel we're going to compare it against is going to be a reel that could be threatened by this Arise Elite, and that's going to be Shimano's best-selling Corrado BFS. Now the Corrado is a little bit smaller, not surprising as it's one of the smallest platforms still available today. Height wise, looks like the Corrado is lower, most definitely. But these two reels, I have a feeling, are going to be going head to head against each other in the future. Now, the reel that the Elite feels the most similar to when palming is going to be this reel the discontinued 2016 Aldebaran BFS 
from Shimano. And they are very similar in size, so I guess it's probably why they feel similar in palming. Even the nose piece is pointed like the Aldebaran. And I don't know, they're very similar in height as well. But yeah, when I palm the Elite, it feels the most like the 2016 Aldebaran to me. But the Aldebaran, because its side plate is bigger, it does feel like it takes up more real estate in your hand than the Elite. So the Elite is very, very comfortable. So now, let's get to what makes this reel so great. So before we get to the spool and the brakes, let's go ahead and get a weight on this Elite and see where it stands in the BFS hierarchy. All right, so Hybo claims that they've done a lot to shape weight off of this Elite, doing things like, you know, porting out the top of the frame, using these really, really small knobs, as well as other things. And they claim they've brought the weight down to 149 grams. So let's see if they met their target weight. Okay, just a little bit over 149 grams. So in ounces, that equates to 5.3 ounces. Now in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to bait caster weight, this is a very, very lightweight reel. But when it comes to bait finesse, these days we have so many reels clocking in at you know under five ounces that this reel is considered mid to upper pack when it comes to weight. So for example, here's the Arise Air from Hybo coming in at 4.8 ounces. But on the other hand, here's the Shimano Corrado and that's coming in at 6.2 ounces. So it's almost a full ounce heavier than this Arise Air. And in fact, the Arise Air is noticeably lighter than a lot of uh, other JDM BFS reels like the Alpha's Air, the Gekka Bidgen, and I think the Xenon LTX as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put up a graphic on the screen for you guys and let you know just where this Arise Air sits when it comes to weight as far as this BFS competition. So now it's time to get into what makes this Elite so great. That's going to be its spool and its brake system. Now to access both, you just flip this latch right here. And I believe it just pulls straight out. The side plate that is. Yep, there we go. And pow, check that out. The spool and the brakes. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the spool out. And Hybo calls this brake system the AMC Plus. And what's so awesome about this brake system is a few things. Now, the first thing is that it is a dynamic system, just like the more expensive reels from Shimano and Daiwa. And number two, it is highly adjustable. I mean, there are so many adjustments you can make on this reel fine-tune the brakes to whatever you're casting that it's insane but also it's very user-friendly so anyone who's a beginner and you're looking at this reel and you're looking at these brakes and they intimidate you don't be intimidated because they are very user-friendly now real quick I'm going to show you how they work and basically there are two points of adjustment on this brake system now the first point of adjustment is going to be this inductor rotor cup. Now this doesn't move during the cast like the Daiwa rotors, but what you do is you can adjust just how far this rotor sticks out. So if you look now, it's not stuck out very far because yeah, we're in the number one position. As I twist the rotor, hopefully you guys can see the number one, number two, number three. And I know we're in the number one position because if you look at the spool shaft on the top and the bottom, you'll see that uh, 
silver pin sticking out and it's pointed to both number ones. Now, this means at this setting, this is gonna have the least amount of breaks. So if you're casting something that's heavy and really aerodynamic and you need distance and you have the skill, this is a setting you may wanna try. Now, if you need, I guess, more break, what you do is you push this rotor, you can see it's spring-loaded, and then you turn it. And then now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it looks like, actually, I'm gonna turn it to the number two setting. Yeah, so now we have switched it from one to two. And you can see the rotor sticks out just a little bit more than the number one setting. So obviously, we can twist it to number three. And at this setting, the rotor is stuck out the farthest, giving you the strongest braking adjustment on the spool. So now, the other point of adjustment is gonna be with the side plate. So hopefully you guys can see, but these are two bank of magnets, and these bank of magnets move closer to the rotor during the cast. You can see how it moves closer to the spool. So that's the dynamic part of the brakes. And of course, with the external dial, you can move this bank of magnets closer or farther away to the spool. So what is it set on? I think it's set on the minimum position. If you can take a look at its positioning. Now we're gonna turn it all the way up the maximum and you can see that the magnet bank has popped out probably not even a millimeter but trust me that's more than enough now when it comes to the total number of brake settings I counted 43 settings when you turn this dial so if you multiply the three internal rotor settings by the 43 external dial settings you're looking at a total of 129 total possible adjustments so these brakes are very, very fine tunable. So with that being said, let's get a weight on the spool. So according to Hybo, the weight on the Elite spool is supposed to be about 5.7 grams. So let's see what the scale says. 7.8. So of course that 5.7 grams is probably without the bearing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the bearing off and get a true weight. Okay, so the bearing and pin are off. And let's see if this spool meets the target weight. Whoa, 6.18. So almost 6.2 grams. That's like half a gram heavier than even what their picture shows on AliExpress. So that's really, really disappointing. 6.18. Now, a few years ago, this would have been one of the lightest stock bait finesse spools out there, but by today's standards, since we have reels like the Flight Feather and the Cormorant, and then of course, Cast King's reels, as well as a few others, 6.18 grams puts it on the heavier side for bait finesse. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put up a graphic for you guys to show you exactly where the Arise Elite stands as far as spool weight hierarchy amongst current bait finesse reels. And you can see it's up there. It's just below the Daiwa Alpha's Air, but there are a ton of other BFS reels that have much lighter spools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my research. Maybe Hybo was quoting 5.7 grams without this uh, rotor cup and I'm also gonna see if anyone else has weighed their Arise Elite spools and come up with the same weight and if theirs are lighter and coming up with the target 5.7 gram weight I'm gonna send the seller an email and see if I can get a different spool now if the weight of the spool disappoints you let me show you something else that might change your mind now here's the spool of the Arise Air and look at the massive size difference the Air has a 28 millimeter spool, and I believe the Elite is supposed to have a 32 millimeter spool. So if you're a bait finesse guy, and you're kind of hating on this really tiny micro spool trend, then this might be the reel for you. In fact, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna pull out the Corrado BFS spool and compare. 
they look to be the same diameter and just to verify it is 32 millimeters I'm gonna try to stick this into the Corrado BFS frame and if it goes in and it does not so this might be like a 33 millimeter spool maybe it is a little bit bigger so yeah just to show you guys even though this spool may be heavy versus a lot of other reels against the Corrado BFS is actually much much lighter as you can see almost three grams lighter so because I'm OCD especially when it comes to bait finesse stuff I went on YouTube and I checked out a couple of videos from other YouTubers that bought this reel and weighed their spools and it turns out their spools weigh the same as mine but I'm gonna show you a picture and you can see why I'm kinda pissed off about this as you can clearly see in the picture their spool says 5.7 grams with the rotor attached so I'm not sure if that was a spool calibration error or whatnot but half a gram spool weight in the world of bait finesse is significant and also I did confirm that this spool diameter is 33 millimeters as I put it into the frame of the Shimano SLX DCXT which also has a 33 millimeter spool and it fit just fine now incidentally Hybo does say that this reel is made for long casting so that bigger spool is definitely going to help but they also claim that it can cast down to one gram so we'll have to see about that so now it's finally time to talk about the price of this reel now on aliexpress you can expect to see prices in the mid $150 range. Of course, it depends on the shop as well. Now, for that price, even though the spool isn't as light as advertised, for what you get with the Arise Elite, all the features and the build quality and the refinement and tight tolerances, that makes this reel an absolute steal. I mean, at $150, what other bait finesse reel out there is in the same price category that gives you this much. I really can't think of any. I think the SLX BFS is around 150 or maybe a little bit more, but on paper, this Arise Elite completely destroys it, at least on paper. So I guess it's gonna be up to you guys if you think that this reel is worth that price after everything I've shown you. But in my opinion, once again, I think it's an absolute bargain. So when I ordered this Arise Elite, in my mind, I thought I would be getting, I guess what you would call a hybrid BFS reel. A reel that would combine attributes of the old generation and the new current generation. Now to explain that further, back in 2016, the average BFS spool was about 32 millimeters in diameter and weighed about seven and a half grams. Now today, in 2023, almost 2024, the average BFS spool is about 29 millimeters and weighs about five and a half grams. So this Elite definitely has the spool diameter of the old generation reels. And as it turns out, it also kind of has the spool weight of the old generation reels as well. And I say that because my 2016 Abu Garcia Revo LTX BF8 had a six gram spool that was 32 millimeters. So it looks like the Elite is gonna fall into that, I guess, power bait finesse category. And to be honest, here in America, I think that's what most people are looking for. I don't think too many Americans bait finesse with the intention of throwing like a trout magnet. And I say that because the Crotto BFS, which is an old generation reel, is selling quite well. So with that being said, the next time you see this reel, it's gonna be going up against the Corrado BFS in a side-by-side -side casting comparison to see what's what. Because on paper, this reel absolutely crushes the Corrado BFS, but of course on paper doesn't always translate out on the water. So let me know what you guys think of this Elite. Are you also disappointed by the spool weight? Or is this exactly what you're looking for? A bigger spooled power BFS reel for 
long casting of heavier BFS lures. All right, guys, thanks a lot.